Yo, what it is, everybody? Thanks for tuning back into another episode here on the Speedbug channel. We talking about not that GSXR. We gonna run on over here around the Trans Am and uh, talk about the GSXR 1000R. This is my 2017 GSXR 1000R. Uh, it is dirty because I went out playing and uh, have a little fun doing a little bit of racing, but nothing too crazy. And then had a nice long cruise. So we got some bugs on here. So the mugs that say that I don't ride my bike, look, see there's a bug stain. It definitely needs a bath because this is definitely not the speed bug way. My bike is dirty and uh, it doesn't look new right now. So it's actually killing me to even film this video to show you guys this. But anyway, may the best bike win. As you see, the 2020 S1000 RR is gone. I do not miss that bike. I do not plan to replace it with another BMW or go back to the previous generation. This bike is here to stay until I find the next best thing that actually comes out. So, may the best bike win, huh? Well, when I did all my rating in my bikes and stuff like that, it was a tie pretty much in my opinion. I really couldn't pick, but I had to kind of pick one. And just because of the electronic features and stuff like that and that how advanced the bmw was it did kind of out edge it as far as as a whole and a complete and that's kind of why i put the bmw ahead of this bike but realistically i still because i primarily do a lot more of my uh riding on the streets and every now and then i go to the track whether it be the circuit track not as often as much anymore but uh, more so the drag strip. I really love drag racing. A lot of my cars, even my Trans Am here, is still set up for drag racing. But uh, I primarily do drag racing. Even though my bike is not set up to drag race, uh, it's not strapped, stretch lowered, you know, stock height, stock wheelbase, everything, because I still do like to lean and turn. And once I ratchet strap this thing down in the front change the wheelbase and all that stuff i get to take a lot of those characteristics completely away from the bike and be able to lean now yes i know that cost me a lot of time a lot of et especially in that first 330 feet but that's not what i like to do but anyway why did i really keep this bike may the best bike win well to be honest with you I think it is the best street bike, 100%. I don't think that there's a better deal as far as performance. 100% it is the best horsepower per dollar, very similar to like Corvette, at least here in the United States. There's no car in the world that will give you better horsepower per dollar in any amount, stick shift or automatic, uh, than Corvette. And I believe that this bike is the exact same way. Now I'll tell you exactly what I paid for my bike and a lot of my viewers always wonder and stuff like that. I paid 13,800 US dollars out the door for this bike when I bought it in Tampa last year. It was about a three or four hour ride for me to go because Broward Motorsports, the shitty ass company, they wanted like 17, 18,000 for the exact same shit. And I would never do business with them anyway, but that's a whole nother topic. So uh even though i have but that's a whole nother topic for another discussion however you can get a lot of these bikes left over even the 18 and the 19 models for those prices 13 14 grand as well uh this bike was brand new it wasn't a demo model or anything like that uh the reason i went there because i wanted the blue one specifically i wanted the suzuki blue with all of the you know five-year-old letter writings and stuff like that i like it i like it, it you know some people say it kind of makes you look like a fuck boy but you know what i like it it looks good plus i had the black bike uh the bmw at the time when i had this one and i didn't want another black bike now obviously since i don't have a black bike i wish it was black but that's okay it's no big deal I'm still not trading it or getting another one. I still love this bike. The Again, the amount of mid-range torque that this bike can also provide to you. Uh, the VVT, and we don't know, again, what Suzuki is going to say if they're going to enable like some type of shift cam or anything like this for the next upcoming model and maybe some cruise control. And if they do, they're really going to set the world on fire. But again, as much as I love Suzuki, Suzuki is damn well known to keep making the same shit for a decade. And not do a damn thing about it and put some new stickers on it and say it's an all brand new bike when we all know it's not but they really killed it when this bike launched in 17 again i've had no issues with mine uh two recalls came out i think one for the o-ring for the gas tank another one for the abs module or something like that i never had mine serviced 
don't have any issues or anything with mine but one day when i get over there to the dealer or something and they look at it they can do it or whatever but uh so far everything works my bike doesn't leak fluid and my brakes work and everything like that and my abs module works but the big reason why i think this bike again is the best bike you know that you can buy horsepower per dollar because a it's stupid comfortable you can ride it very comfortably on the street and you guys know i'm a stickler for the uh for the seats and for the street riding the street riding and track riding are two different things you're gonna buy this bike you're gonna want to go out with your girl your guys you know whatever do whatever on it drive two three hours do a little bit of street racing do some pulls on an open road you know drag some knees around some corners and stuff like that if that's your thing and then take it to the track and then also go home maybe go on a date with it whatever so comfort and reliability are two major factors that really always come into play more so i could say on other bikes so if you're out with you know whatever your boyfriend your girlfriend it doesn't matter what it is and this bike seats hard as a rock and 10 minutes into it you're like man i just want to get the hell off this thing you ain't even going to run to take this out unless you're really going to horse around and be a dick on it all the time where this one i don't ever mind going out i don't have any issues with it nothing with the brakes nothing with the the lights the, you know it gets good gas mileage everything under the sun the reliability is awesome and i can attest to that because this is what my fifth or sixth one fixed i don't know worked on hundreds of them for as far as maintenance and stuff like that between friends and family and acquaintances that have had them and they're all the same and and yes the suzuki have its problems just like kawasaki just like honda ducati and yamaha and everyone else under the sun but however, the reliability, the parts, the and and the ease to fix it is is like second to none. It's it was just like designed so simple. It just it it just works. Now again, is it the fastest bike on the racetrack? No. Has it won maybe the most titles in the past? Sure, yes. But winning is not always everything every single time. It's about having the whole package, and that's to me why I think this bike is the perfect package and it is stupid easy to ride the reliability is superior to none it's stupid easy to fix it looks okay it's not the best looking bike and i'll be the first one to admit it now i like suzuki so i think it it looks good but i do think the yamahas look a little bit better i do think they look a little bit more aggressive hell the ducatis for damn sure look better but do you always want to be wrenching on them? Do you always want to be able to be not comfortable? Do you want to be able to ride for two, three hours and be like, oh man, I can't wait to get the hell off this thing? Stuff like that. No, out of the box and everything you could change and stuff like that to make those other bikes a little bit better and stuff like that. But really, do you want to go spend thirteen, fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars on a motorcycle and then have to put another five thousand into it just to make it rideable and comfortable? No. You do that and you spend a couple thousand in it, kind of like what I did with my flash and my exhaust and my intake work and, and head work and stuff like that, all on this bike to do that because now that's like an accessory item to make it go faster. It was already fast out of the gate, but could you make it faster? Of course, yes, but I'm not trying to make it uncomfortable or it didn't come uncomfortable. Now I have to try and make it rideable or anything like that. No. So when we go out for rides and stuff like that, I'm comfortable, my passenger's comfortable, I have no issues or anything like that with the bike starting, with the bike stopping or anything like that. And that to me also why I think it is just the best bang for the buck. Uh, second to none, I think it would be the outgoing uh, BMW S1000 RR. It's downside, in my opinion, on that bike is just the electronics. Uh, but is as is its downside is its, its its strong suit because it has so many aids and electronics. But all those aids and electronics they tend to fail sometimes over time. I didn't have too many issues with mine. Other people had issues with theirs, but they're machines. You know, the five are gonna come off the assembly line, kicking ass. The next five just suck. You know, it, that, that's just the nature of a man-made machine. So. Uh, that's just me, and I, I think this bike, you know, with the with the mid range torque, uh, I I'm, I think it was on my dyno that when I dynoed this, it made eighty three or eighty nine foot pounds of torque to the to the rear tire or something. If I, I'd have to look at the dyno sheet to remember, but uh, it was in the eighties. I I can't remember because the stock before the flash and all the work, it was in the seventies, and I know for sure it was in the eighties, and that's ridiculous for an inline four. Uh, 
to, to do that on the street. So when you want to play and do wheelies or when you just need to get up and go and you can ride around in fifth and sixth gear all the time because you have that torque to get it to go, it's nice to always not be able to shift and you just get to go. And torque is fun. Torque is that feeling that you feel. You know, horsepower is just how long you can actually create torque for. And that feeling, that seat of the pants feeling that you get of being able to take off and go, it's just... This bike just delivers it and delivers it 100%. So in my opinion, may the best bike win. This bike is staying here to keep uh, and I have no intention on getting rid of it. I for sure plan on seeing this bike probably turn. Um, I don't know, like my last one. I think it was, I sold it with like 40,000 miles and uh, I think I checked the valves at about 40,000 and they were still tight as a drum just the day that I got them and uh, hopefully this one stays the same but of course you know if anything happens with this I'm not afraid to admit it this thing punches a hole in the block or you know drops a valve or something like that I'll be sure to tell you I'm not going to hide it you know or anything like that it's a machine shit happens stuff can break and especially the way that I ride it and beat on it sometimes so uh, I'll keep you guys posted but uh, may the best bike win I do think for now until something else comes along this is the best horsepower per dollar that you can get even with the aftermarket stuff to be on it as well if you're gonna slam stretch it and everything like that uh, I think the Suzuki GSXR 1000 double R uh, uh, is probably and uh, not double R uh, Suzuki 1000 R is going to be the uh, best bike that you can get horsepower per dollar currently at the time until something else comes out now if you don't like the way the bike looks again then you don't like the way the bike looks and you go get something else that maybe feels a little bit more appealing to you but uh this one just works for me and uh any questions comments below let me know uh below in the video of course i'll do my best to answer and uh that's gonna wrap it up here for today's video hope you guys like what you saw facebook instagram at the speed bug same name here's youtube we'll check you here for some more episodes peace Now, I wasn't just going to allow this to go, but I'll just throw it in the same video. Two cars I've kind of been toying around either maybe getting. The Viper or the McLaren. Two different cars. Yes, we know the McLaren has that little bit more exotic wow factor. A little bit. But the Viper just has that still exotic wow factor. You got DCT versus raw stick shift, you know, American raw muscle. Um... The Viper will destroy the McLaren around a racetrack. The McLaren, you can drive from Florida all the way to Canada comfortably. The Viper, you want to take it from here to the store down the street, you can't wait to get the hell out of it. McLarens are a little bit more common. You see them all the time, like, oh, sweet, love to that. That's a McLaren. That's badass. That's awesome. Viper, you're like, damn, that's a Viper. That shit's bad. But... What are you gonna do? And uh, those are the two I've been kind of toying around to get away. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, two completely different cars and uh, two completely different styles of driving, uh, two completely different handling cars, acceleration, everything about them couldn't be more different. And uh, I don't know which one I wanna pick, you know? I'm that American more muscle car guy and uh, I really love the Viper and it's definitely been more of a dream car for me. But I really also love that freaking McLaren and uh, the McLaren has that uh, also that wow exotic factor. So does the, the Viper, but the Viper's that loud, raw, and in, I'm in your face. The McLaren's kind of like, I don't know, the, the bouginess. And it's got the cool doors and stuff like that, but it'll never be as, as raw and as mean as a Viper. So let me know what you guys think. Nothing's definitive, but we'll see what happens. Peace.